This next example is just another quick demo of the R3D module, um, and it starts again the same the same way with uh, um, the X, Y, and Z parameters in the um, the uh, camera perspective parameters X, Y, and Z uh, set to default values. Again, we have an update function which is automatically run the first time we do that do that function. Um, and again, in the update function, there are two main parts. There's um, a world that's created. We create a block, starting with an empty block, and then we append to that block. Um, in this case, just a, another cube model. Um, that's one of the built-in objects that you can use in, in uh, the R3D module. Again, we create a red cube with a certain size. Um, and then, from that model, we create um, the, the 2D draw um, values that are required to, to draw that 3D object in Rebel. As, that just produces some Rebel code, a block of Rebel code, um, that, or of Rebel draw commands. And um, again, this time we're going to call it rendered instead of re render triangles like it was in the previous example. And that uses the R3D function render. And we render the world that we've created above, which is just a cube. Um, and we, it's positioned using the uh, R3D position object function that's included in the, in the R3D module. And we position it according to the values that are set initially. Um, and the uh, perspective, the camera perspective is, is set. And then, again, we just have a simple little GUI. Um, the, the part above is basically uh, a standard template that we could use as the most simple way to put an R3D object on the screen. And then this view layout is just the controls. And in this case, what's happening, uh, the point of this little demo is to show you that you can control the, the uh, movements, the animation in the R3D module using uh, any sort of um, data input. In this case, what's happening is we have a bunch of blank text across the screen. So it doesn't really appear, you don't see anything across the top of the screen. There are no controls as sliders as there were last time. What's happening here is there are keys for each of these text uh, items, each of these text widgets. So these are uh, keystroke shortcuts that we can use to control um, or, or to make these actions happen. So when the keyboard A is pressed, that little uh, pound symbol with the quoted A means when the key is pressed, run this action code. And again, what's happening is the X value is being set. Uh, to be 10, 10 more, um, and then the update function is r run, and the um, little box, the graphic box where the draw command um, is up, uh, is is included, is updated. So um, what's happening is we run that update function with the new x value, so it changes the the values that are created in the rendered um, in the rendered block. And then when we show the screen, when we show that little block, it redraws those newly rendered uh, values. And we have a, a number of keystrokes here to change every one of the values so you can actually see each of the possible values that can be changed, including the positioning and the camera positioning of the 3D model. Um, I've already pasted the R3D code into Rebel. Run this, and what happens here? I press the A key, it turns it one way. S key goes back the other way. D key goes another way. F goes another way. G another way, and then H back. And these values could just as easily be um, sent to the interpreter by a key or by a, uh, you know keyboard. It could be, for example, sent by a joystick uh, attached to a serial port. It could be sent over a network. Um, you know, any way that Rebel can retrieve data can be uh, sent to this program. We can update those X, Y, and Z values uh, by any uh, data input method that Rebel is capable of. And just so you see um, the actual R3D code, the code that, that we've been using is just a compressed version of the actual Rebel code, so it takes up a little less space in our program, but if we take a look at uh, one of Andrew's examples, the iRebot 
Um, in this example, you can actually see his uh, actual code. It's got the copyright, which allows you to use the, the module free of charge. Um, and the first thing in the uh, R3D code is, um, or in this example actually, is just a little layout that uh, is a help layout, which we'll use la later. There's a button in this example that you can click on to get some help. It's called About R3D. Um, that's just a simple GUI. Um, and then, this is the actual uh, R3D code, and it, it builds a number of um, data data blocks and um, functions. We've seen the R3D perspective function already. Um, these are all the built-in functions that actually do all the um, all the actual coding, and uh, which which create all of the um, uh, draw commands. So these are the built-in functions. If you if you really want to get down into the the code and understand how this works, it's good to go through his examples and actually read read through this, see what the uh, what the R three D functions are doing, um, so you have an understanding of what all the possibilities are with this code. Um, these are all the functions. You can scroll through them and read and actually understand the logic about how these um, um, the 3D objects are created and how they can be manipulated. And if you need to make any changes, you can also do that. Um, there again is the render function, which actually creates the, the draw commands. Um, and as you go through here, um, this now is uh, the cube model definition, and beyond that is the, the script. So this is equivalent to what we've been looking at so far. This makes use of all the built-in R3D functions. And he starts out um, declaring some default values, the X, Y, and Z values, for example. Um, he builds a world, and everything is very well documented. Um, he has the update function, and in this case, he's got a number of uh, a number of objects. These are all cube model objects. Um, the arms of the of the robot and all the different things that can move. So he's creating a number of items. These are the fingers and so forth, and sets the x and y and z values and perspective. And then here is the render triangles block at the end. And before the, all that is run in the program, he creates a blank render triangles function. And then here is the view layout, so calling the, the GUI out. Um, and a couple starting uh, parameters, setting the origin to be zero at 0 and 5 pixels. No background effect with gradient. Um, and then here is the box called our R3D viewport in this case, instead of in our case we had SCRN, um, and uh, the render triangles draw, draw function, drawing those uh, triangles that were created above. Um, and then there's the help button, where he runs the, uh, the help GUI that was created in the beginning. Uh, a couple labels, which he calls you know, styles, uh, as a, a label uh, widget. And then all of the actual labels that are uh, sliders which control each of these values. And in each case, again, um, he's setting some new values, update, updating, and then showing that um, R3D viewport in the box. And works the same way down here again for each of these sliders. Um, he's setting a new X, Y, or Z value, and then updating the the box so that the render, new rendered triangles is shown. And the beginning, uh, here before the whole thing is displayed, he's got um, some initial values that are uh, that are assigned to the sliders. So the slider is set to 0.05 so that you get a uh, initial position for the robot. Runs the update function to make it begin and then we use that layout.